The Vortrekkers were Afrikaner emigrants during the 1830s and 1840s who left the Cape Colony moving into the interior of what is now South Africa, in what is known as the Great Trek. The Great Trek consisted of a number of mass movements under a number of different leaders. Vortrekker leaders arranged in order by size of party, number of families in brackets, Hendrik Pockieter, 158, Sarah L. Siliers, Piet Retief, 139, Jan du Plessis, 116, Jacobus Christoffel Pockieter, Peter Daniel Jacobs, 85, Petrus Lafras U. Wise, 79, Johannes Stephanus Maritz, 68, Gerhardus Marthinus Maritz, 57, Carol Peter Landman, 54, Jacob de Klerk, Jr., 52, Philippus Albertus Oppermann, Sr., 41, Andres Wilhelmus Jacobus Pretorius, 38, Jared Renier van Ruyen, 29, Gerhardus Jacobus Rudolf, 26, Louis Jacobus Nell, 26, Lucas Johannes Meyer, 24, Joachim Christoffel Espargo Esbach, 23, Johann Hendrik de Longy, 15, Hercules Philip Mallon, 13, Louis Trigard, 13, Stephanus Petrus Erasmus, 9, Johannes Jacobus Janser van Rensburg, 7, Ari Zacharias Visagy, 6, David Stephanus Fori, 6, Jan Matthies de Beer, 6, Hermanus Stephanus Lombard, 2, Johannes Jacobus Erasmus, 1. The total number of families that trekked under a trek leader is 1093. From available sources it was found that during the years 1835 to 1845 a total of about 2,540 families took part in the Great Trek. Origins the Vortrekkers mainly came from the farming community of the Eastern Cape although some originally came from the Western Cape farming community, while others were successful tradesmen in the frontier towns. Some of them were wealthy men though most were not as they were from the poorer communities of the frontier. It was recorded that the 33 Vortrekker families at the Battle of Vegkop lost 100 horses, between 4,000 and 7,000 cattle, and between 40,000 and 50,000 sheep. The Vortrekkers were mainly of Trekber descent living in the eastern frontiers of the Cape. Hence, their ancestors had long established a semi-nomadic existence of trekking into expanding frontiers. Amongst the Vortrekkers were poor men too belonging to the squatter or Biwana class. The reasons for the mass emigration from the Cape Colony have been much discussed over the years. Africana historiography has emphasized the hardships endured by the frontier farmers which they blamed on British policies of pacifying the Koza tribes. Other historians have emphasized the harshness of the life in the Eastern Cape compared to the attractions of the fertile country of Natal, the Orange Free State and the Transvaal. Growing land shortages have also been cited as a contributing factor. The true reasons were obviously very complex and certainly consisted of both push factors and pull factors reasons for the Great Trek were many. During the ten years following 1818, Natal south of the Tagela and most of the Great Plateau had been emptied of people by a cataclysmic disaster which black Africans still speak of with, or as the Mifikain, the crushing, the revocation of Lord Glenelg of the province of Queen Adelaide and restoring it to the Kosa, the continued chronic insecurity on the frontier, being blamed by the government for provoking an unjust war. The colony was perceived as being no place for Christian people to live. Land was becoming scarce and expensive owing to natural increase in the Afrikaans-speaking population and the advent of 5,000 British settlers during 1820. Persistent drought. The advance of the English tongue, especially in official circles, at the expense of the Taal. The emancipation of the slaves ordained by the British in 1833. The inadequate compensation for the freed slaves by the British. The emancipation of the slaves took effect during harvest season. Chronic mortification at the way the Boers' actions were so freely criticized by the missionaries. 
the official recognition of the equality between colored men and whites. The Kamizee treks returned filled with enthusiasm for the countries they had visited. In both places, they said, was land for the taking, land where their countrymen could set up independent states. The British authorities had stopped ammunition being traded across the Orange, and someone like Yan Pretorius, the sub-leader of the Trigard Trek, wanted to buy gunpowder from the Portuguese in Lorenzo Marques, and he thought that joining Trigard's caravan was the safest way of getting there. History Piet Retief delegation massacre The Vortrekkers migrated into Natal in 1837 and negotiated a land treaty in February 1838 with the Zulu king, Dingana. Upon reconsideration, Dingana double-crossed the Vortrekkers, killing the delegation of 100 including their leader Piet Retief on 6 February 1838. The land treaty was later found in Piet Retief's possession. It gave the Vortrekkers the land between the Tagela River and Port St. John's. Blaukron's massacre on 17 February 1838 Dingana sent an empire against the Vortrekkers which resulted in the Blaukron's massacre where over 500 Vortrekkers were killed by Zulu warriors. Amongst those killed were Joachim Johannes Prinzlu, B3C3D6E1, 30 March 1783, Martha Louisa Prinzlu, B3C3D4E5, Battle of Blood River Andrews Pretorius filled the Vortrekker leadership vacuum, hoping to punish Dingana, retrieve stolen livestock and reclaim the land Dingana had granted to Retief. When Dingana sent an empire of around 15,000 to 21,000 Zulu warriors to attack the local contingent of Vortrekkers in response, the Vortrekkers defended themselves at a battle at Encum River on 16 December 1838, where the vastly outnumbered Vortrekker contingent defeated the Zulu warriors. This date later became known as the Day of the Vow, as the Vortrekkers made a vow to God that they would honor the date if he were to deliver them from what they viewed as almost insurmountable odds. The victory of the besieged Vortrekkers at Encum River was considered a turning point. The Vortrekkers set up the Notalia Republic in 1839 which was situated between the Tagela River and Port Saint. John's is per the land treaty between Dingana and Retief, but Britain annexed this area in 1843, whereupon most of the local Boers trekked further north, joining other Vortrekkers who had established themselves in that region. Migration to the Waterberg Other Vortrekkers migrated north to the Waterberg area, where some of them settled and began ranching operations which activities enhanced the pressure placed on indigenous wildlife by pre-existing tribesmen, whose Bantu predecessors had previously initiated such grazing in the Waterberg region. These Vortrekkers arriving in the Waterberg area believed they had reached the Nile River area of Egypt, based upon their understanding of the local topography. Struggle against the Indabella armed conflict, first with the Indabella people under Malikazi in the area which was to become the Transvaal, then against the Zulus under Dingana, went the Vortrekkers way, mostly because of their tactics, their horsemanship and the effectiveness of their muzzle-loading guns. This success led to the establishment of a number of small Boer republics which slowly coalesced into the Orange Free State and the South African Republic. These two states would survive until their annexation in 1900 by the United Kingdom during the Second Anglo-Boer War. Memorials The Vortrekkers are commemorated by the Vortrekker Monument located on Monument Hill overlooking Pretoria, the erstwhile capital of the South African Republic and the current and historic administrative capital of the Republic of South Africa. Pretoria was named after the Vortrekker leader Andrews Pretorius. The Vortrekkers had a distinctive flag, used mainly by the Vortrekkers who followed Andrews Hendrik Potgieta, which is why it was also known as the Potgieter flag. This flag was used as the flag of the Zoutpansberg Republic until this republic was incorporated into the Transvaal Republic also known as the South African Republic. 
A version of this flag was used at Poshefström, one of the first independent board towns and republics established by local Vortrekkers.